with you. God gathers us this morning on the fourth Sunday of Advent to be refreshed by the word and the touch of Christmas. The following worship today all are invited downstairs to Emmanuel Hall for a time of informal fellowship. Christmas worship begins tonight with Christmas Eve services at 7 and 10 p.m. And I know all month it said 7 a.m. in the bulletin, but I wasn't here. 7 p.m. and 7, 10 p.m. and both are Holy Communion with Carols. And then on Monday, Christmas Day at 10.30 a.m., we're invited to gather for Holy Communion again. And on Sunday, December 31st, the first Sunday of Christmas, there is service of the Word again at 10.30 there are still some spots remaining at all services for worship assistance. And please see me after worship for more details or sign up on the sheet in the front hall. Thank you to all who go to the Lord Poinsettias and memory or honor of a loved one. The list of those remembered and honored will be included in the Christmas Eve and Day bulletins. If you're not going to be at one of those services and you'd like a souvenir bulletin, we have them upstairs, so please see me after worship and I can get you one or more. And you can either take the points that is with you after the services or leave them for the rest of the season. Thank you to all who helped with the Christmas choir worship and share your Christmas baking fellowship last Sunday. It was truly a blessed time of Advent preparation. And we're not sure why, but John and I have discovered that it's probably our highest viewed uh, YouTube video of worship for the last three or four months, we think. And this service is also being taped and put online, so welcome to all those who will be watching it later. For a bundle of undated offering on Wolf for 2024, please see Linda or call the office and leave a message. And please note that donations for this year need to be received by December 31st for your tax receipt purposes. And thank you for all of your support throughout this year. The copies of the January to March issue of our National Church's Daily Devotional Booklet, Eternity for Today, are going fast. And they're available for pickup in the front hall, or you can also call for a drop off. Let us stand and sing together our gathering song of the Advent song, All Earth is Hopeful, number 266. <laughs> Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's be seated as we listen to God's Word. The first reading is taken from Psalm 89, verses 1 to 4 and 19 to 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor shall the wicked bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love are with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers, and he will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing the uh, next hymn, 210 to 271. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel, 
and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Let us turn to greet the good news with the words of the gospel acclamation. <coughs> Hallelujah, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. In this annunciation, Luke makes clear that God comes with good news for ordinary people from little-known places. <clears throat> the king will not be born to royalty in a palace, but to common folk in a stall. Here Luke highlights the role of the Spirit, a special emphasis in this gospel. Because I think as soon as Mary heard this news, she sat down. You may be seated for the gospel. <laughs> Not, really because of the length, but I thought that. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name <coughs> was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will it be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. One writer has observed that in manger scenes on Christmas bulletins and in our imaginations, Mary shines with gentleness and an unworldly faith. Yet someone else wonders, in how many living rooms does Gabriel have to make an appearance before he finds someone who says yes? I had never thought of it that way before. We assume God knows Mary is going to say yes. Or as another writes, that it was all worked out, a no-brainer, a slam dunk, that God had it in the bag before Gabriel ever set out. Yet Mary does not agree right away. Instead, her yes comes after she takes the time to think, ask questions, and finally, to accept her role in birthing the good news. And this promise process invites all of us to ponder how we respond to God's calls to us, usually of lesser revelations. What does it take us to say yes to God? What does it mean for us after we do so? Out of the blue, it seems, the angel Gabriel shows up at Mary's door 
and announces that she is highly favored and the Lord is with her. Luke tells us that she was greatly troubled. Well, duh. Mary has every reason to be completely taken aback by a stranger showing up at her door and making such a grand but vague pronouncement. Others have noted that the angel's words contrast sharply with Mary's background. In her society, Mary is among the most powerless, young, in a time that valued age, female, and not yet Mary. <coughs> How she responds then to this divine announcement could change her life. One wrong move could ruin her personal and family reputation and destroy her future hopes. In the midst of Mary becoming greatly troubled, the angel seeks to reassure her and to convince her to join the mission. Gabriel offers many large promises, seven major ones in quick succession. The titles he uses have a long history in the Hebrew scriptures and seem intended to make Mary feel blessed by God. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You will give birth to a son. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Still Mary isn't buying in. And again, this makes perfect sense. She has just received a nothing will ever be the same again kind of greeting. <clears throat> She's been asked to give birth to the kingdom through her own flesh and blood, through her own sweat and tears. She has been invited to have faith in something beyond her understanding. And so Mary again asks, how can this be? I'm not qualified. I don't have the credentials. I don't have the experience. I don't know what in the world I am doing. And I like how one writer notes, you can't help but feel that Gabriel was embarrassed by the question. His answer is specific but lacking in detail. It is a declaration of faith and not a gynecological arrangement. He says God's got it covered. You can trust that. Nothing is impossible with God. Look at Elizabeth, he adds. She's heard similar news, though secondhand from Zachariah. She's also pregnant. God is using her as well to bring this unexpected news to a world so in need. And finally, Mary says yes. She does so in faith, clinging to God's word. She does so daring to believe that God has called her, of all people, to bring God's presence to this world. She does so trusting that God is with her and with Elizabeth and with their unborn children to do new things for all people. God continues to call ordinary people like Mary, like you and like me, to live lives of faith that bring hope to the world. Related to this, I like these words of Lauren Winner, which I read last week. To live the life of faith, we must let God interrupt us. This is especially so when God calls us to step off the accepted path that society has laid before us. When Creator calls us to reach out beyond ourselves, serving God's children to help us in deciding 
God reminds us that in Christ we are loved, favored. Creator in turn calls us to share that love with the world. To say yes also takes a power that comes from beyond us. It might not happen often that God sends an angel like Gabriel to call us to service, or to service of such an earth-changing magnitude. Still, in whatever situation, God's Spirit, God's presence, promises to be with us as we step out in faith. And when we believe that God could do much better by calling someone else, as with Mary and Elizabeth, Creator also works to join us to others, to help in the mission, support for each other, and using our different gifts together. Just as God in Christ has called us to live in community, so in our calling as disciples does Creator join us in mission to serve. Soon as Christmas comes, because of Mary's yes, we will witness the joy of the shepherds and the admiration of the wise men. We will receive the good news of the Savior, born for you and for me and for all people. Listen during this time for how God is calling you to share this good news in your words and activities in the days and weeks to come. Listen, ponder, and as Mary said, say yes. Amen. Let us stand as we're able to sing together the hymn of the day, Love Has Come, number 292. we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. And a special prayer today of thanksgiving. Uh, we, first of all, thank you for the, the beautiful picture of the original Fast Lake Church, which is on our, now on our, um, our memorial covered up in the front hall. And also on the bulletin board, you'll see the new building for Salem Lutheran Church, which is uh, because of the weather we've had during December, they were able to put up the roof truss and, and put up the whole roof. So the church is closed in. And last night was their Christmas Eve service at the community hall. 
but an hour earlier they went and they sang carols inside their new sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So we give thanks to God for that, and as soon as I can get pictures of them inside, I'll put them on the bulletin board as well. Mm -hmm. Oh God, bring your church into thoughtful, caring, and collaborative relationship with those of other faiths. Strengthen our shared values, that we work together in caring for our world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, in your presence you, come, you gather us to worship you and to receive the good news. We give thanks for the building arising in Pass Lake. We pray that Salem Congregation may soon once again be able to worship in their home and to serve the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As fields and crops lie dormant, bless them with holy rest. Prepare them to thrive, that they provide abundant food in due season. Protect animals who hibernate, and provide for all who scavenge for food in the lean season. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up the lowly and cast down the arrogant. Teach humility to all in positions of authority. Break down systems of oppression, especially systems that perpetuate inequality and exclusion. Do not allow wealth, power, or pride to become idols that obscure your call to justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Look with favor upon all who cry out to you. Accompany with tenderness all who are afraid or ill. Rescue all who experience abuse or who live under threat of violence, especially refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers, in search of a safe and stable home. Those we remember include Micah, Bray, and Eleanor, Karen, Glenn, and Keith, Matthew, June, and Caroline, Cindy, Judy, and Harvey, Art, Fallon, and Eleanor, Audrey, Daniel, and Michael, Karen, Jeannie, and Jerome, Lawrence, Larry, and Gary, Jim, Marita, and Nick, Kathleen, Chris, and Donna May, Elaine, Catherine, and Susan, Linda, Sharon, Rayland, and Nell, Taylor, Dorothy, and Vicki. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are pleased to make your home among us. Listen now to our silent prayers. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessed are you for Mary and for all your servants in every generation who lived according to your promise of mercy. Strengthen us by their example until the revelation of your glory is made known. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like the offerings to be brought forward. Let us pray. God, our provider, 
By your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive God's blessing. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song, either the last song of Advent or the first song of Christmas, Joy to the World, number 267.